start uh, joining us. We are we are live. Um, let's wait a few minutes that people start uh, joining. Okay, we have one participant from outside, <laughs> two, <laughs> so they're slowly coming in. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Let's wait a minute and then, um, and then we start. Hi, Nikita. Thanks for coming. Hello, Nico, and everybody. Hello. Yes. OK, let's wait uh, a few minutes. One minute. I think uh, people are coming slowly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are, we are adding up. Yeah, yeah they are, they're coming. Let's um, give it a few more seconds, and then uh, and then we, we can start. Mm. Uh, maybe can I ask Enrique to please put his uh, starting slide on the screen so that we have yes, a yes, yes, uh, we have a kind of uh, introductory slide for the for the webinar. Yes. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Let's, uh, I, I the screen. We, thank you. I think we, we waited a minute. We we we, we can start. Okay. Yeah? So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the NITEP uh, mini school <clears throat> on modeling for in the times of, uh, of COVID-19. Uh, this today is the, is the last lecture in the, in the series. And uh, I'm very happy to welcome again, uh, Professor Nico Orze from the University of Western Cape and his uh, international uh, team of, uh, of contributors. <clears throat> And uh, uh, today's speaker will be Professor Jose Enrique Amaro uh, from the University of Granada. And I will leave it uh, to Nico to please introduce the speaker and your other team members that, uh, that are here for, <coughs> for support. So please, Nico. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Francesco. Today is my, my great pleasure to introduce um, one of my, of my heroes at the university, a real physicist, as I, I would call, uh, Jose Enrique Amaro from the University of Granada. He has uh, um, review papers on uh, quasi-elastic neutrino nucleus cross-sections. He has a new interaction, a nuclear-nuclear nu nuclear interaction, error analysis. He has a beautiful paper on error analysis of nuclear forces and effective interactions with lots of parameters, some of them up to 35, the, the AV18, argon, you know, the, there are many, uh, many nuclear nucleon forces with uh, many potentials with lots of, in, lots of parameters. And here, uh, Jose Enrique introduced the death model, um, and, you know, by just using three parameters, he managed to uh, start, you know, to explain and the basics of uh, pandemic evolution for COVID-19. And he started with the, with the Spanish uh, pandemic, and then he expanded all over the, there were people asking from Sweden, from all over the place, from South Africa. And he has been doing his Monte Carlo simulation uh, for all these countries. And then he will show today uh, some of that. I'm, as I say, I have the great pleasure to have uh, Jose Enrique Amaro with us today. Thank you, Jose Enrique, for coming. Thank you, Nico. Uh, okay, so today we will speak about the Monte Carlo uh, P model. I call it P model or Planck model because uh, we use the Planck distribution of photons in the black body theory. And, um, the, and then later we will show you the, the Android application to make the, this Monte Carlo simulation. We usually do it in Fortran, but in order to see the, the, the simulation graphically, we implement it also for the, for the mobile phones. Uh, okay, the, the Monte Carlo Planck model it's just a simulation model of an uh, epidemic sp spread. Uh, we use a lattice of cells that can be in four different states, uh, susceptible, infected, recovery, or death. 
in the case of an infected cell, it can transmit the disease to any other susceptible cell within some random range R. And this uh, trans the transmission mechanism follows the laws of the interaction of a particle with a target, as in nuclear physics or particle physics. Then each infected particle incites a number n of times over the interaction region according to its energy. More energy, more interactions. Okay. And the number of interaction is proportional to the interaction cross section, uh, as in physics, and also to the target surface density, rho. Um, the discrete energy, that is a number of times or number of interactions, uh, follows the plant distribution law depending on the temperature of the system. So that is a parameter of the model. And for any interaction, we apply an infection probability. That is a number between zero and one that we have to, to, to fix in some way. And we also apply recovery and death probabilities depending on time on infection of infection okay and finally we feed the model parameters to death data from the covid 19 pandemic this is just a, a summary then to explain the model uh, we use a system that is a two-dimensional grid or lattice a square is just a square with cells okay and each unit cell has two coordinates. K is a vector with two components, K1, K2. I'll describe the one, one cell in the, in the grid. Then a K, K1 or K2 take the integral values, one, two, up to some maximum L where L is the total size of the system with a surface L to the square. This is the number of individuals inside or number of cells in the system. We usually use L equals 300, but can be any number. Um, then, is, uh, we assume that each cell K, that is a, a vector, is occupied by an individual who can be in any, uh, let me close this, can be in any of four states or, state or uh, classes. Susceptible, can be infected, can be recovered, or can be dead. Okay, then we specify this state by, although. The, the, the state by four fields or four matrices S susceptible, I infected, R recovery, and D dead. Okay, this can take the values one or zero, that is like a state quantum number. In the initial state, that is T equal to zero, all the individuals are susceptible, that is, as the k is equal to one for all k, and the other matrices are zero, infected zero, recovery zero, death zero. For all but except one initially infected cell, k zero, we just uh, assume that there is one infected uh, uh, cell or one infected individual, where S of K0 is equal to zero and in I of K0 is one. So this is the, the individual that starts the pandemic. And we choose the initial infected cell at the center of the grid. So this is the definition of the system. And then we compute the time evolution 
in the simulation. So we compute the state of the system in time intervals delta of t equal one, one day. So each day we compute the state of the of all the cells in the system. Uh, and at the end of the day, that can be one, two, three, we compute and store in the matrices the current state of the system. Okay, and we repeat this up to some number of days, usually 100, 200. We also store the total number of susceptible, infected, recovered, and dead, and also the daily increments, delta of S, delta of I, delta of R, and delta of D. And we repeat the calculation for the next day. This is the um, how we do the time evolution. Then um, for day T, for each day, we apply the following algorithm to each cell K. So we make a, a loop over all the cells. And for each cell K, we just uh, see if it is infected or not. So if it is not infected, at this uh, I of K is zero, we do nothing. So we pass to the following cell. But if it is infected, I of K equal one, then we assume that it can infect only people in other cells within a range R. And this value of the range R, we compute it uh, and here I start the Monte Carlo randomly. We compute the value of R randomly with some probability distribution. And here we assume an exponential law. That is the probability of R is just exponential of R minus R over R zero. That is the mean value of the distribution. This is normalized to one, okay? And this R zero is one of the parameters of the model. So we just, with R zero, we can, we just choose random numbers following this probability distribution. Okay, so once R is chosen for an infected particle, this is a random number, it can interact, that is the, the individual here in this cell, can interact randomly with any of the individuals within the region that is within this uh, range, okay? So we call N uh, sub R, the number of individuals within the range R, and this region has an, an area, S, S of R. This is the surface of the, of the region where our particle can infect other particles, particles or cells, okay? So this is the first, uh, the first step in the Monte Carlo, it is to generate are some range for the cell to infect, okay? Then, in second, we uh, compute the interaction between individuals via uh, interaction cross-section, sigma, that is uh, another parameter of the model. Then what we use is the, the formula for the number of interaction when n particles are shot over a target, okay? And this is the, the classical formula of the cross section. The number of interactions is n, that is the number of, of <coughs> particles, uh, incident particles, uh, multiplied by the number of target particles in air, 
multiplied by the cross section divided by the area of the beam, let's say. And this is equal to N over S is the density, the surface density, rho. So this, the number of interactions is N times rho sigma. Here we assume rho equal one because we have one particle, okay, uh, over in one cell, but we can use any density. This is the surface density. And now, the number of shots n is related with the mobility of the individuals. With the number of times that a, a particle um, um, uh, a particle interact or it uh, shot are shot over uh, inside the, the the region within the range r okay so this number has to be computed randomly okay the number of shots and it is related with the mobility of the individuals okay so what we do here is that we identify n with the energy of the individuals similar similarly to the plan law for photons that is the energy of uh, some radiation electromagnetic wave is the number of photons multiplied by Planck constant by the frequency with H, uh, we choose H, uh, this energy of one photon is equal to one, yes, for, um, because we, here we are not uh, dealing with photons, just uh, uh, so um, uh, um, that is h nu is equal to one. So directly n give us the number of photons, or you know, in, in in our case it's the number of shots. Okay. So the value, but you can you can think about photons. That is like the number of photons. So the value of n is chosen randomly, in analogy to the plan law for photons from statistical physics. That is from the black body tradition. So we write the energy distribution. Uh, this is the Planck distribution. The probability of n is exponential minus n over t, this exponential, divided by this uh, normalization constant. So it's an exponential distribution law, but with the, 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 the variable is discrete. So n is just an integral number. It can be zero, one, two, three, okay? And we introduce here a parameter t that is, of course, the temperature of the system. Okay, some units, okay? So this is another, parameter for our model. So this is why the model is called the Planck model, because we use this, this Planck distribution. And uh, next, the next step in the Monte Carlo is um, the infection probability. So we now assume that we know the range and the number of interaction Okay. Uh, uh, so we choose randomly n cells with, with coordinates uh, k prime within the interaction region, and so we know that there is there are uh, the number of interactions. Sorry, that here there is an an error. This this is not this is not n. This will be and n interaction, number of interaction, that is n multiplied by rho sigma. But we, we know the number of interactions, and now we decide uh, if the, as a result of the interaction, there is a, uh, the, the particle is infected or not, okay? So we choose 
some number of particles within the interaction ratio, region. Ah, if this cell K prime is susceptible, then we assume that it can be infected with probability, with some probability, uh, P of infection. That is some number between zero and one that we, it's just another parameter of our model. Okay, so it can be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.05, okay. That is, so uh, we decide at this point randomly if it is infected or not according to that probability, okay. And in case that it become infected, we just change the value of the corresponding matrix, matrix Fk prime, it's the uh, actually matrix element, S of k prime equal to zero, that is not susceptible, and just change this infected state to one. Okay, so in this way, we propagate the infection with some probability. At this point, we also store the time it becomes infected in the infection time matrix. This, this matrix theta store the time in, of infection of uh, one cell, okay? This matrix is important for the next step because we have to decide when the particle becomes recovered or death. And this is the next step, recovery or death. So after inf interacting with all the individuals within the range R, we decide if the cell K becomes recovered or dead at night. Okay, so at the end of the day, we just, with some probability, uh, compute or simulate recovery or death. So we assume that the removal probability depends on time with some function that we choose. It's like a sigmoid function. This uh, probability of removal of time is one divided by one plus exponential of TR minus T divided by B. And this is chosen because this way, because in, with this function, uh, well, TR is a time such, uh, such that the probability is one half. And we assume that TR is, uh, much larger than B, that are two parameters. So this function has the um, um, property that the removal probability is very small for low times. That is, for in one or two days, uh, the recovery or death uh, are not, uh, the probability of recovery is very small, okay? And for uh, T very large, T going to infinity, the removal probability is one. That is all the individuals recover or die at the end for a long time, okay? And uh, so in here, we, using this function, um, probability, uh, removal probability, we randomly decide if, if K, is removed at the end of the day with a probability uh, P removal of T minus the time that the particle was infected. And this depends on the time T minus theta of K. And theta of K is a matrix that store the time when the particle was infected, okay? Um, and then in case K is removed, we just change the state quantum number in the infective matrix. We put this I of K equal to zero. So now it's not infected because it is recovered. And in the final step, if the particle is removed, we decide if it is dead or not. And this is done randomly with some probability that is the death probability. That is another parameter 
of the mother. That is some number between zero and one. And otherwise, it is recovery, okay? So this is the Monte Carlo model. What we see is that the, the parameters of the model are eight parameters. So the algorithm depends on the following parameters. First, the size of the, the, size of the system, R. This determines the number of cells, L squared. Then the range of the interaction, R0. Uh, this parameter can be made time dependent. So we, by changing it, we, uh, we can simulate lockdown, for instance, or long travels in holidays. So we can change it with time if we want. Usually it is a constant. Mm -hmm. Then the, the third parameter is the cross section time density, that is rho sigma. This measure the probability of interaction between two individuals. Then the temperature of the system, T, is related to the mobility. And if, uh, these are physical parameters. And then these are the, uh, the infection probability. It's some number between zero and one. The, the removal probability parameters, TR and B, these are two parameters more. And finally, the death probability, P of death. So in total, there are eight parameters. And this can be made space time dependent also. Usually they are constant, but uh, we can, it's not, it's very easy to, to change. The, and make them space time dependent to study the effects of political enforcement, lockdown, social distancing with time, large events, and so on. So, with these eight parameters, uh, we can describe the data. With the parameters are fitted to data. And here is an example. This is the Monte Carlo fitted to data in Spain, the first wave, up to May 2, the 2nd of May. And that is, we fit, for instance, here, all this data. Uh, the blue are the Monte Carlo, okay? So we predict here that this is going down in this way. Um, there is a, a thing here because in, in Spain on March 8, there was a large demonstration. So the country, the, the Women's Day, and this is was simulated by increasing the first day, the probability of infection, or I don't remember exactly how we do it, but we increased the, yes, I think, we increased the cross section in one day, we can do that. And there was also a lockdown a week later, so we also implement the lockdown by changing this, in this, in this day, we change the range, we make the range smaller, okay? Simulating the lockdown, that is uh, less mo mobility, okay? or less range of interaction. And this is the, the feature. You see that it, it can be fitted very well with this, uh, with, with this model. This is the total death compared with the D model. So we see that uh, actually the Monte Carlo simulates very well the pandemic here this way. And this is the same, but for May 25, where the pandemic ended, the first wave ended in Spain with the Monte Carlo, yeah? also with the dead model, the D model. And uh, also fit very well, okay. Mm. And, uh, okay, so once we, we feed this data, we 
we can try to simulate what will happen if we change some parameters of the model. For instance, here I change uh, using the same parameters, but without the uh, 8M events. That is a demonstration. So we see that there is a shift. There will be a shift of the peak to the right without the demonstration. Uh, here, we made the Monte Carlo body without the lockdown. So we just change the parameter of the long day lockdown without the first lockdown. And we see that then the peak is a narrow, okay, narrower and is higher compared with the lockdown here. And finally, here uh, we assume that the lockdown, uh, that is the Monte Carlo, is without the HM event and with lockdown the following day, that is 9 of March. And we see that the peak here, you see, uh, changed completely and is 10 to large times. Okay. This is for Spain. Here, I, I show you here an example for Sweden, first wave. We see that in Sweden, there was, um, uh, this data can be fit very well with the Monte Carlo, and also with the D model. This was made, uh, I don't remember the date. But this will be around May. And finally, two, uh, some example for South Africa, the first way, we feed the Monte Carlo on August 30. Here, the Monte Carlo is the green, and the data are the is red. Okay, so we see uh, there is a symmetrical peak. This is the D model, and this is the total death. Uh, compared with the Monte Carlo, did very well. Uh, this is the same, but for October 20, with the same fit as we, we made the fit here, but here we compare with the data up to October 20. So what we see here is that he, at the end, and, and this doesn't match very well because around here, the second wave started, and uh, it can be seen here. Uh, this is the feed that we made on February 20, uh, 20, um, 10. So last month or two months ago. Um, so to do this, this uh, simulation, we made two simulations. The first one is the first peak. And we started a second simulation starting here around the end of the first peak. Okay. So these are two, two independent simulations because one has to assume that the, the waves are independent. So we fit one and then we fit one peak and then we fit the other peak. So these are the results I wanted to show you for, for the. Um, and date, data comparison with the Monte Carlo. And now I'm going to show you the uh, Android app that we made for um, to simulate the, that is to simulate, to make a simulation on a, on, a, on a mobile phone with Android, it's only for Android. This, this is the app called Pandemic that we made last year. Uh, so it's just a implementation of the Monte Carlo on a mobile phone in order to run the simulation. So you can choose here the parameters. Um, so you, the length of the system, that is 300. Here the range is eight. 
um, that you can change. The expose, we, we call the exposure and the mobility. And what is exposure? No. Uh, I don't remember. Ah, sorry, no. The, what we call here the exposure is just the cross section. So this is, we call exposure, but this is the cross section multiplied by the density, 0 0.1. Okay, it gives you the probability of interaction. Then the mobility, that is the temperature. Uh, then the recovery time. Recovery interval, these are the parameters of the recovery probability. 20 here and recovery. This is the parameter B. This is the parameter TR. And then the probability of infection, 0 0.2. The probability of death, 0 0.3. And finally, we also include here the lockdown and just you can choose the time of lockdown, 20, so the day 20, and the lockdown range three. So starting day 20, the range change to three, but uh, before 20, the range is eight. So you can choose here the, and also the number of days we can, we, that we can compute. Okay, so with these parameters, I think this is fitted to uh, reproduce the pandemic, the first wave of Spain. We have also the parameters for South Africa. They are very similar, just chain two parameters. Okay, but uh, so if I run this, this, you see here the cells, that is the system. Here there are 300 times, uh, 300 and 300 here, and you see the red, the the red as susceptible, the no sorry the green as susceptible, the red as infected, the blue are recovery, and the black that you cannot see here, but we have to to wait. The black are death. And you can choose here, you see here the day 26, 27, because it's computing the propagation. Uh, and you can see here the number of susceptible, how chain, the number of infected, recovery, death, and the total here, the total is, I'm sorry, the total is 9,000, 90,000, okay, yes, is, uh, 90,000 because it's 300 times 300. This is the total number of cells here. And you also can see here in this button C, you can see the, the susceptible, the infected as a function of the time, the recovery and the death. You can also hear here the total death, okay? Uh, we we know the total death because we know the death probability, so we we know uh, that uh, there will be uh, twenty seven thousand death because the probability of death is zero point three, I believe. And we see here the daily death. Okay, and here this button you can change if you want interactively. The range you can make it smaller, and you can uh, choose the position in order to see what happened. You change in the middle of the pandemic the parameters, or you change the mobility. Okay, uh, you see here the map. So at the end of the pandemic, this is the the end. You see that every cell is recovered. Uh, there are only uh, six, uh, 60, 48, 648 susceptible. 
So everybody is, has been infected and recovery or death in this model, okay? So this is the application. So this application can be downloaded from my web page and this I show you here. Uh, you just look for Jose Enrique Amaros and you find this web, this is my web page. So here you can see the coronavirus, coronavirus, COVID-19 page. And here you can download the pandemic app for Android. Here you see, uh, just click here and you download this, this pandemic app and release APK that is a, the installation file for Android phones that you just download is uh, 12 MEV, uh, 12 me megabytes, okay? And here you can see some screen captures of the, of the application with the, uh, with all the screens. The, the total it can also be here, see here. Uh, I know I, I have stopped the application. Um, okay, so I think I have finished. Uh, I, I will finish here. Uh, so you have some questions, Nico? Or... <clears throat> yeah, Jose Enrique, thank you yes. so much for the very exciting uh, and practical uh, talk. I'm sure many participants will download your codes and start uh, installing it on their phones. Uh, but Nico, would you like to guide us through the question session? So, yeah, of course. So, uh, one question coming from Arun Kumar Bisham. He's asking, how much space does the application take? How much uh, what? Space does the application uh, no. take? The application is just 12, 12 megabytes. And as I say, uh, you say before, you can go to your Amaro uh, University, UGR.es, University of Granada uh, .es, yes. slash tilde Amaro, and you can access the code there. Otherwise, we can go, yeah, just can you please, uh, yeah, that's the link there, right there for everyone to download. Yes, you yes. click on this picture here and you download the application. Uh, it's yes. very easy. No, no, you look look for for Jose Enrique Amaro. Right. On you just this is my page here, yeah, the first one. Right. Uh, <clears throat> this is, this so is, you click and then you can start playing with the application and change. You, you uh, have to uh, you have to install, but you have to allow on the phone the um, to to allow to install applications outside the, the Google store, that is the Google Play, because by the right. by, by default, they, they don't allow you to install applications that are from the, that are not from the, that these are not uh, official applications. So right, you right, right. In the, I, I don't so know it needs... the on the phone, you have to allow to install applications that are not, from the Google Play. Right. Okay. So let me see. Um, so obviously as, uh, as this application, uh, our, our goal is hopefully to distribute this application throughout all the schools and uh, uh, for everyone to know, because this is a, a very uh, strong tool for kids to realize why they have to wear masks, to keep distance, you know, so by learning how to use a Monte Carlo simulation and how to stop the pandemic, you can play with the parameters. And this is, as we say, is part of our awareness uh, policy to reach as many, as many kids as possible. So uh, also I just sent in the, on the chat a link for everyone to, if we want to repeat this mini school or we want to, to progress 
uh, on how to improve it for the next time, I just quickly made a Google form, which I think, uh, do you have it there? Uh, for, uh, Ilya, do you see the, the Google form? Uh, I put yes. it on the chat. I yes, put it yes. on the chat. Yeah, I can yeah, put yeah. it also on the... People have to scroll up a little bit because there yeah. were other comments after that. No, thank you very much. Yeah. So I would like I would like to get a feedback from maybe from everyone participating uh, about what uh, what do you think whether it motivated you the, the mini school to to combine mathematics, physics, computer science. You know, it's, it, this is the the main goal that we we wanted to to bring up to everyone. <clears throat> And uh, as I said to, to Daphne at the beginning, she, she represents the University of Venda. As Andini represents Nelson Mandela University, we have the, the, the mathematics department at the University of Pretoria, and also Chris Theron is involved with, with us. So what we want is to expand, to, to, to bring these uh, codes to everyone. So everyone has the possibility to develop uh, and learn new things. I mean, I'm learning every day. I'm talking to Cloud, to, to Amaro, about this new paper that we are, we are writing down, <clears throat> about new possibilities on, on time dependence of the, of the A, B, and C parameters of the death model with Cloud Makatsu. So we, we keep uh, improving things. And this is the in terms of research, but also in terms of uh, transformation. So this is the, the Google form. And if there are any more questions, guys, this is the time to ask. I also, I also, with your permission, Francesco, I, I requested the following. That remember at the, uh, during uh, Jeremy's uh, talk, actually before Jeremy's talk, we say that you know we can go to COVID-19, uh, to the corona, uh, these uh, world meters and extract the data for any country that we want. And we provided the Python code to do so. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, now you can also go to the South African AMRC and extract the same data for similar data for the excess depth, right? Mm -hmm. So for the purpose of those who actually pay attention and learn something, I would like to, uh, Francesco, to provide uh, from NIFEP like, a, a, like a, an achievement, you know, a, a diploma of achievement to those who actually solve that problem. The problem yeah. of getting data from excess uh, depth mm -hmm. and compare with the depth model and see actually whether the, the death, excess death follow the same pattern as the, uh, the, the COVID-19 death in South Africa. So would you, would you agree with that, Francesco, to motivate our students to... Yeah, no, no, definitely. You remember at the beginning, I told right. you it would be nice to have a little challenge so that we can award a certificate of participation or a certificate of achievement or whatever, yeah. And right. um, so yeah, no, please. Uh, I would suggest that uh, uh, the participants that uh, want to take part in this challenge email you the results so that you can right. check that they did it correctly and, and you can let us know and we will issue the certificate accordingly. Thank you so much, Francesco. So together with you, we will ask you to sign it as well. Yeah. Thanks. Asandini, Asandini is, is raising his hand. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. Then let me allow Asandini. Uh, sorry, I don't see. Uh, ah, yeah, I don't need to allow you anything. Talk. Sorry, just... you're already a panelist. <laughs> yes, uh, so, uh, um, uh, so at the initialization of the Monte Carlo, uh, some, so I, I get lost between K and K0. Uh, it was first initialized that uh, only the probability of being susceptible, susceptible is one. But later on, then you change the initialization to I of K0 equals to one and S of K0 equals to zero. Uh, yeah, I got lost there, Amaro. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, <coughs> the initialization is just, um, so the initial state is, uh, all the cells are susceptible, so S is one, is one, except for some one cell at the center, K0, that is, you can choose uh, any way, but we choose at the center, 
So for one cell, there is one cell where that is infected, that is, that is um, this matrix I of K0 is equal to one. So, uh, so. Why? Uh, sorry, Amar, why, why um, S, S of K0, it's not, it's not equals to. Uh, to one. Uh, and, and, and now, whatever the number you initialize minus this IK0 because you are taking one out of the system. And no, you need, in, in order that the Monte Carlo works, you need mm. one infected cell. So we okay. choose one infected cell <laughs> that we call K0. You can choose any number, but we choose just one mm. infected cell at the center and this infected cell infect all the others but start at the center okay this is why in the application uh, in the simulation here you see that the initial cell is at here at the center you cannot see because it's very small but you can see that uh, in, in several days this is the tenth now all these cells start to be infected starting from the center you see mm. yeah. so this is just one infected cell what starts the the pandemic okay okay also enrique what we discussed before that the the infection rate is very, very fast. I mean, the population gets, gets infected in, in days, the total population end, right? Uh, yes, you can see that. The, for, this was according, very nice. According to the Monte Carlo, in 20 days, at least as you see, this is eight, eight nine. In, in 20 days, you see that they all the, you see this is day 15, 16, 17 uh, in 20 days is, uh, well, half of the population you see here infected uh, in 25 days, more or less, half, almost half of the population is infected. Right. And at the end, this is day 28, at the end, all the population is infected or recovered or dead. And this is what uh, the Monte Carlo is uh, showing. So this, uh, this has, uh, <clears throat> according to the dev model and the extended SIR model, this has a strong implications, right, uh, Amaro? Enrique, because we have the, the situation where, where the tendency looks like we are, uh, we are going to everyone, most of the people recovers finally, or get susceptible, they call it in the death model. They get into this uh, because also most of the people get, get uh, infected, but only about 1.6%, as you as we saw in the paper, die out of that total population N, which is not the total population of the country, because N we don't normally know, right? Uh... Okay, this is just a, a simulation on, in a grid, square grid. Is, so it doesn't describe exactly the, the geometry of the country and the density, the true density of people. It's just a simulation with a very simple model. So, um, we wouldn't know in these circumstances, uh, all people will be infected. But when you have separate region in the countries, then um, you have the mountains. So you, you, you will have, if you have the rivers, you will have to describe all the, all the, uh, the geometry of the, of the true uh, country. No, this is just a simulation fit it to right. the data. Another thing you said, you said that you mentioned, you changed two parameters. I thought that just the death rate. 
you change the death rate with respect to the to the simulations that you did in August for the for the first wave. For the second wave, you change the death rate, which was a, a higher. We have a I higher think, death yeah. rate. Right? Yes, I, I don't remember I had it's somewhere in the code. I, think, it was I like, think that usually the the parameters once you feed the parameters, this parameter works more or less for all the countries. Just change um, the death the death rate or some just change a little change of some parameter, but usually they are quite consistent for all the countries. I think. Mm -hmm. Because so uh, this this tells us about some kind of universality of the of the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. If uh, so, it doesn't there seem to be the similar pattern everywhere, right? Yes, only you have to change a little the maybe the uh, I don't know is if this is related to the lockdown or something. Yeah, but all different. the parameters that depend on the infection are also the death rate is just actually just uh, uh, can be larger for some countries where they have less hospital, I don't know. But um, usually it's very universal. Right. Mm. All right. Any more questions? Uh, let, let me see if there's anything. There is a question in the chat. Oh. And, and the question is, by infected, you mean the PCR test positive cases or symptomatic cases? Uh, that is, we don't, we don't enter on what is infected. We assume that there is a virus people are infected and recover or death. But what we feed is not the infected, we feed the death because actually you cannot know, you can, it's impossible to know how many people are infected if you don't perform tests uh, to all the people every day, <laughs> it's impossible. So this is why we just feed the death uh, even the death we don't know, as 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 you we no, see this. Uh, even the death uh, we don't know because many deaths right. are just death with positive PCR. So, but we don't have a, any other data. So you just we just feed the official data. And we assume that uh, some people are infected, but actually we don't. We have no way to know how many people are infected as a function of time, it's impossible. Right. It's impossible to know. Ilya, there's another question by Reg, uh, raise the hand by Reg Dots. Yeah, I added <clears throat> to, the, to, the, to the panelists and he's allowed to ask his question. Mm -hmm. Can I talk? Uh, hello, yes. um, I've been looking at the, uh, when you talk about the death rate, do you mean the case fatality rate? No, the death rate is just the probability of death. In well, this case, the case fatality rate is the number of deaths divided by the number of cases. How do you calculate the probability? No, no, we don't calculate. We fit the probability. No, sure, but I mean, you want to want it to look like the, let's say, the real. I call it real in inverted commas uh, uh, death rate. Now, the the I've been calculating it for almost daily from the beginning of the pandemic a year ago. And it's very interesting how it varies. In South Africa, our case fatality rate was very low. And now it's, it's very high. It's gone up to 3.4% of the cases. Whereas uh, in, yes. in the That's US, it is now 1.7%. No, we know and what- You are what... using a figure of 1.64. I'm just interested how you arrive at the 1.64. No, no, but um, that is a true death rate, but here is a probability that the, the death probability is just a parameter of the model. It's not the true death probability because we don't use, as it, in this system, we don't, uh, we just have 90,000 people. Okay, okay. In this okay. Now, I'm, 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 I'm with you, but my, my real question is now at the bottom of all this is 
uh, it's about these statistics that we get on the on Worldometer. They 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 really very right. very fishy for some countries, but but let's assume that that what Worldometer says is true. Then we can actually figure out how false some of the statistics is, and it would be an interesting study to use a, a model to 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 say something about the stats right. that are coming out but, of but, say of Spain or out of America or out right. of South Africa or out of the UK. Uh, or whatever. Like Reg, but we have that. Document. We have that from the in the death model. We calculated the infected and the death. That's why you have the death uh, that percentage of 1.6 percent, which I mentioned before. And this is that is in our paper. But as Enrique say in the in the Monte Carlo simulation, it's a it's a parameter. And we generally take the death uh, the the death model to fit the parameters from the in the Monte Carlo simulation. But the, the actual uh, actual data that you are looking for is in, is coming is in the paper in the in the figures that we show a couple of weeks ago, infected over death or death over infected, which was the percentage of 1.6 which I mentioned before. Yes, thank you very much. I, I, I... It is also, also to do that is to simulate the worldometer data, we will need a system where there are thousands of millions of people. <laughs> and this will be hard to do on the computer, the simulation that it can be done, but we need to increase the, the size for the system. So this is but just- what I'm, uh, well, I'm suggesting another paper to, to assess the yeah. validity of some of Yes, and then we should, we should also we should simulate the, the geometry of each uh, country with the right density of people with the right, uh, yeah. you know, and this is very, it's very difficult to do. <laughs> we just yes, no, of course, but, but thank you very simple. much. I've enjoyed your, your, your mini school. Thank you. thank you. There are many things, as Reg says, there are many things to, that still need to be done. You know, we are not that, we haven't uh, uh, succeeded to explain fully the, the, the pandemic. And uh, this is a very simple model that we are, uh, you know, proposing. And obviously, there will be new uh, implementations as we we get the time and we just discuss with you guys, with everyone, you know, who wants to be involved and to expand the the basics of the of the model and see whether we can achieve something. You know, it's, this is very a very complicated thing to do. As uh, Enrique mentioned, we can simulate the geography, the actual numbers of the population, but that will take a long time for the Monte Carlo simulation to run. So these, all these things, they need, uh, they need time and, uh, and we need people to, to be involved. Enrique, you want to say something? Oh, no, just uh, the problem is that uh, to, to make a simulation, uh, Realistic, let's see. You need um, thousands or millions of this the system to be uh, simulate the real size of the system. And we are just uh, implementing a calculation that um, reproduces the data, but with in a, in a very small system. So actually, the the parameters that is there that probability or infection probability are not realistic because these are uh, just made in a, a small system, just 90,000 people, okay? So if you, uh, that is, if you have, uh, in, the, in Spain there are 40, 45 million people, then we should take, uh, a system with, um, I don't know, maybe 1,000, no? Well, about 10,000, no? 10,000, 10,000 or less. And this will take uh, some time to, to compute. And I think it can be done, but uh, of, of course, if you change the size of the system, the, all the parameters are going to change accordingly to the size. 
Um, Someone okay, is raising okay. the, the and, hand. Uh, what? Yes. Uh, Didier, you can ask your question. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, I am from uh, from Cameroon. I am from the University of Yaoundé One. And uh, I would like to, to know, we are not acquainted with uh, the Monte Carlo simulations, uh, such an numerical method. So I would like to know if one could use another numerical method to, to solve the, S, the SIR model and to apply it for, uh, let's say, the, the case of my country. Which country? We, uh, you, Cameroon. 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 I don't know yes. how is Cameroon, uh, how are the Cameroon data, you know. <laughs> Nico. If you, give, if you give me one minute, I can get the Cameroon data. I just need, uh, I just need yeah. a minute to... No, but you can use the, the simple D, the D model. This is the... The D model, yeah, we can do the D model, but I need the... Uh, the D model. I need the... Python script, I need to edit the Python script to add Cameroon. If you give me one second, the edit uh, script uh, dot pi, the Python script can get the data from any country. Uh, we can get Cameroon right now. We didn't get, we have from Mongolia. I don't think we have Cameroon. Cameroon, here we go. Let's see, we're going to run the script and we're going to show you Cameroon in a sec. So uh, Python 3, remember Python 3 is script.py. Uh, we are collecting the data for all the countries, including Cameroon, Brazil, India. So let me quickly share the screen with you. This is like, a, like one of those magic shows that you want to. Uh, okay, see, see. I, I, can, I can tell you that in, in Cameroon, you don't have a pandemic. You know a pandemic, right? No, there is no pandemic. There are Maybe no data. There's no data. Let me let me quickly okay. I'm downloading the data. Um, here, well, here we go. Cameroon is, is downloaded already. So I want to show Italy. I've been showing Italy for a long time. Now you have the fourth wave coming up. Francesco, unfortunately, we mentioned this long time ago at the beginning. I know. But then <clears throat> let's look what happened in Cameroon. Uh, Obviously, we have to change the dates and everything, but uh, we collected the data from right now. Uh, as you say, there's nothing, there's nothing there. No, there's no pandemic. Is, there is no pandemic, so there's no you, pandemic. You are safe. No, okay. don't worry. You are safe. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so it's impossible. You are, you are no data. Don't know. No data. No data is good data. You know. <laughs> that is good. No, um, uh, uh, but maybe uh, I would like. Is it possible to to send me um, the pa the papers you used for? But everything for everything is, the, everything the, is in, in the GitHub. Uh, I think in the chat there's a GitHub. Yeah, I, I can I can mention it right here. So you can go to this web page and you have all the information there including the videos from previous lectures. So yes. you can actually go to the videos and learn how to do these kind of uh, simulations that I just presented right there, right? So actually, quickly, I wanted to show about the third wave. Everyone has been waiting for the third wave. What happened in Africa, in South Africa? So let's go to the Western Cape. Uh, it's been slowly coming down. This is data from yesterday. So there's no indication of a, of a third wave, not even in the, in the if we go uh, to the Eastern Cape, uh, where the different variations of the, of the virus were observed, were identified. Eastern Cape also, you know, we follow the trend is going down. And then we go to South Africa as a whole. Uh, let's go here to South Africa. So there were some data which we showed the other day. So this bump here, the little bump there, is probably a, a backlog from data in Limpopo and KwaZulu Natal. So obviously that backlog uh, change 
you know, if we go and see it with the with the full model, it actually looks like uh, we have a, a a fair wave coming. But I again, I believe this is the the a backlog, and this data here is not uh, of uh, meaningful information. However, during Eastern, as we know, everyone, everyone, we have uh, this issue happening of COVID-19 in Italy, Spain, France. Now the, all, the, all the hospitals are full in France again. So this is not uh, uh, a situation where we are out of danger. Uh, still, still, we are there. And the same thing, it may not have been a backlog. And it, might, it may have been an indication of data happening, actually. And during Eastern time, during the, 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 the holidays, is always a, a time where, where, um, where the pandemic can spread easier. And again, I, I will always tell to, to keep the, the distance, keep your mask, and keep it, uh, keep it up until we are safely uh, down here. Down here. And we don't, we don't get more viruses anymore, hopefully. The situation will change. Also, the president Ramaphosa has uh, told us that they're going to make 30 million vaccines in the Eastern Cape. So let's hope that the situation gets improved. But so far, we don't have much of uh, vaccines. And the only hope is that these models are right. But Thank as a... Uh, so, really? Enrique. Yeah, yeah, yes, tell me. Just, uh, just, just to show any, anything else you want to see before we finish this mini school, Francesco. Any other country? Any other? Any other simulation? Ilya, you want to see Russia? <laughs> so everyone has the tools yeah. now to do whatever you want, right? Yeah. No, no. Thank you very much, uh, Nico. I, I think it was really uh, very informative, and um, and I think everybody has now the tools to to play around and to earn uh, a certificate yeah and a certificate they, that's right they perform the task that you uh, that you suggested yeah and Sorry, maybe we, can, uh, we can it a little bit and uh, and allow to 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 choose maybe even some other data that you didn't show <laughs> right 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 in case someone um, wants to do it for some other african countries that uh, that we didn't mention but everybody should have now all the all the tools yeah but I think so I will ask about Sudan. Sudan, yeah. <laughs> we'll post it. Uh, actually, actually, we we may have uh, in the in the form in the Google form I, I mentioned here before. Please fill it up, and and then you can keep sending us the questions. You know what happened about Sudan, and yeah. we we can, we can send you the the, the situation in, in Sudan or different African countries, and uh, and but. Uh, you know, let's have an emailing list which we can make out of the registr registration also that you have, Francesco, in your in your yeah. Zoom meeting. We can send everybody's, everybody's in the mailing list. Right. So, so then we can we can do that. We can use that emailing list and send yeah. information to everyone yeah, when yeah, we yeah. change something and you know upon no request. But the best thing is that you do it yourself. You have the tools, you know, you yeah. can change the Python. Let me just quickly change one thing. Just just check one one little thing here. Go to the Python code. I just added Cameroon, but you can do this and put Sudan, right? And then just copy, save. We can compile the, the code quickly. Uh, you just compile it quickly, and then it will give us, again, all this list, including Sudan. And uh, while we download the data, we can quickly show that to satisfy, satisfy the interest of our Sudanese friends here. What happened in Sudan? Let's see what is coming. It takes 40 seconds. Uh, Colombia, Argentina, Canada. And here we go. Let me see whether Sudan is coming. As soon as it comes, we got the data. Um, Ukraine. Ilya, where are you from? Russia or Ukraine? Russia. Russia. Okay. All right, Sudan is, is coming. So then Sudan, boom. So obviously in Sudan also you have a strange behavior, which also tells us, uh, many times we discussed with, with Enrique, tells us, obviously we have to change the dates and to see what the, but this strange behavior is not, uh, 
you know, the counting of the data, data counting is also very important. And these fluctuations seems to be a, a little bit uh, chaotic. Maybe here it's counting better, but we have to change the dates. But again, as uh, Enrique said, there's no, there's no pandemic in Sudan unless you know we believe these data points here. I don't know. Sometimes it's difficult to know from the data that comes to us. What do you think about this data, <laughs> Enrique? Um, no, there, no, there is no pandemic. No, you, there's no pandemic. You sh should see the peak, and you don't have. Uh, right, you don't have a peak. You can change this, and, and maybe. That's a maybe. random. This is just random. Right. We can think Feb, and then change to this, and see what happens. Uh, yeah, we can fit this. You know, you can play with the dates as as you wish. And fit this this uh, first whatever it's not it's not it's, there's no pandemic here, as as these are statistical methods. The more data, the better for the model, right? To fit the data and to get more uh, meaningful results. If you have little data, it's, it's it's good for for the country, it's good for you guys, but it's not good for the models. So with that, I think we are uh, done from my side. Enrique, you want to say something else? So. Nothing. No. Thank you Nicole. very much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Daphne? Y yes, I, I was saying my question is not answered. <laughs> oh, your question is not answered. I, I didn't see what's happening. This question? Uh, I, I was asking if the app, the pandemic app, is applicable uh, in uh, doing other models, analyzing other models, like uh, just a system of for ordinary differential equation representing uh, any infectious disease? The Monte Carlo is just, uh, okay, the, the differential equation for the pandemic, that is uh, the SIR model is just, uh, um, it's a differential equation that gives you a continuous function. That's, uh, this uh, should be more or less uh, the average values of the Monte Carlo, but the Monte Carlo has more possibilities to, that is the Monte Carlo is not, you are not solving any differential equation. It's just a discrete uh, propagation. In some, in some sense it's similar to solving the, the differential equation, but it's not the same. It's, it's different, it's just a, um, a a discrete set of equation, let's say. And, yeah, and it is random, it gives you random numbers. Yes, what I want to know is that with this app, can we also analyze any other model? Any other disease? No, 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 any other model, kind of model, because the Monte Carlo is one of, is one of uh, the models. So we also have other models. Actually, I feed the Monte Carlo to the D model. So, uh, so the Monte Carlo is just uh, the Monte Carlo. It's not. It's a different model. Okay. But maybe yeah, as a concluding <laughs> remark uh, from my, yeah. side, I think I, I picked up that uh, there might be need for uh, for another mini school where we do uh, out of uh, first principle uh, principles an introduction to monte carlo methods yeah because uh, it seems that maybe there are some members in in the audience that uh, that would like to see a, a yes so i did enter in the details but the the, the basic of the monte carlo is to generate random numbers with some probability yeah, 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 but um, maybe we need to organize mm. one day. Uh, uh, yeah, so the, uh, how great. Yeah. You can use it for solving many problems. Yeah. That is to compute integrals. Also, also you even can solve differential equations, but yeah. you have to define well the, the things because the Monte Carlo gives you um, stochastic uh, functions, not continuous functions. They are random. Yeah. So it gives you fluctuations that is more realistic than the SIR model that gives you just uh, the average values. You don't see fluctuations. Yeah. 
Okay, wonderful. Then um, I think it's my task to thank uh, Nico, Jose, Enrique, and and the other members of, of your team. Some of them are, are with here with us here today. Some of of them are not here today, but uh, we we want to thank them uh, as well. So Nico, thank you very much uh, for organizing uh, a very interesting series of lectures. And you saw from the many questions, um, I'm sure you will receive many more, <laughs> many more via email or via the the, the Google form. Yeah, and um, we will announce uh, shortly uh, the next uh, mini school. And, uh, and we are looking forward to, to see you all again uh, on, uh, on our regular Tuesday afternoon uh, meetings. So Nico, uh, Jose Enrique, uh, Daphne and uh, Asbindini, thank you very much for, for being with us uh, this afternoon and, uh, and for all your time and preparation to make this uh, a, nice, uh, a very nice success. Yeah, so thank you very much. So have a good have a, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Still stay thank safe. you so much, for everyone. Yeah, no, uh, it you. was a, it was a pleasure actually yeah, no, thank you very much it was really nice yeah thank you thank you all, all the best thank you bye 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 bye, bye.